This is a Dermoid we call it. Uh. How old already? You got it from young, right? Yeah. Puppy hood. Uh. Uh. Uh, That's an interesting one. Uh, I've seen it in other Shih Tzu. Uh. It's a rare thing. And uh, it will grow bigger. Did it grow bigger and bigger? No. Huh? Since uh, we bought him from the back. No, the, 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 the white. White growth, you know? Uh, no, it's normal. Didn't ex extend it's out? No, did not extend. They got hairs here, do you notice? Huh? There, is, there are hairs inside. Yeah. Hmm? But no cataract or anything? No, no, this is, this is the corneal one. Oh. This is uh, usually uh, born, born with it, yeah. Oh. But normally it grows bigger, so you check for me. Uh. Okay. It grows bigger, then we need to cut it off uh, from the cornea. It's the outgrowth. Uh. Me they call it the dermoid, yeah. But to me, his uh, eyes are infected. Yeah, the growth bigger covers the. Can't see really. Eyes are the first objects we see in a person or an animal. Pretty big, clear eyes are attractive. Eyes and a chrysanthemum haircut face make the Shih Tzu the top three small dog breeds as pets in Singapore. From the Pio Vet case files over the past forty years. The Shih Tzu breed has the most incidence of ocular dermoid. Dermoids are non-cancerous masses of fat, hair and skin found in an abnormal location of the body. Ocular dermoids are found in the eye. There are two types. One is the lipodermoid. It is located in the conjunctival tissues near the lateral canthus. The other is the limbodermoid. It is found in the limbus which is the junction of the eye white and the cornea. This is a Behind the Pets veterinary educational video brought to you by Tupayo Vets. This video shows surgical procedures. Your discretion is advised. Singapore is a city-state with more than 80% of the residents living in apartments. Small dog breeds such as Shih Tzu are most popular as apartment pets. Shih Tzu's appear to be the breed that is most affected by ocular dermoids in cases seen at Topio Vets. This is an electrosurgical excision of a limbo dermoid in a dog. Dr. Sing Kong Yuan, Topio Vets, 30 September 2009. I do not know whether other use electrosurgery to remove ocular dermoids from the cornea. This video shows the electrosurgical procedure to excise the limbo dermoid using electricity. Surgical procedures are as follows. This is a normal left eye of a Shih Tzu. It has no dermoids. On the other hand, a limbo dermoid is at the junction of the sclera and the cornea as in this case in the right eye. Sedation is used by IV ketamine and xylazine general anesthesia containing isofluorine gas and oxygen. Electricity is used to excise the dermoid. As seen in the video, three quarter of the dermoid has been excised. The dermoid inside the cornea is being excised. More dermoid is excised using the circular loop. Be careful not to enter the eye causing rupture of the globe. No more excision after over 90% of the dermoid has been cut out. Care must be taken not to enter the eye when excising the dermoid. In this case, the site where the dermoid lay was not covered by a piece of transplanted cornea. A third eyelid flap for 14 days facilitates healing of the exposed cornea epithelium. Antibiotic eye drops are applied daily for 14 days. An Elizabeth collar for 14 days prevents scratching of the eye. This image shows a Labrador retriever wearing an Elizabeth collar for 14 days. He had a lipodermoid excise using a scalpel blade and scissors. In young puppies and kittens of less than 2 months, anti-inflammatory eye drops must not be used to prevent swelling and scarring. Post-surgery The owner did not permit me to ward the patient for 14 days after surgery. He wanted the dog back by day 4. So, I took out the eyelid stitches sewing the eyelids together to facilitate corneal healing on day 4 instead of day 14. On day 9 after surgery, I followed up and saw the corneal healing taking place. 
As to whether there will be corneal scarring later, I was unable to follow up. I electroexcised over 90% of the dermoid but not 100% as I do not want to risk the corneal laceration rupturing the globe. From the cornea healing at day 9 when Dr. Singh saw the dog, the outcome is excellent. No complaints from the owner for some months after the surgery as no news is good news. There are two types of surgical treatment. First, superficial keratotomy using surgical blade number 11 is the other option is to excise the limbal dermoid. Second surgical treatment is to use electrosurgery which is the process shown in the video. Excision of the limbal dermoid is best practice. Many puppies rub the eyes as the dermoid hair irritates the cornea. The rubbing of the eye leads to cornea ulceration, decimetosil, globe rupture, and blindness in many cases. For more information, please visit our website at topiovets.com or contact us via the telephone or email.